Bueno, este proyecto que les presentaré fue... This project is the result of a research that was, conducted, uh, that was carried out in Aligo, in Medellin, Colombia. The, uh, the goal was that network engineers could devote their time and activities beyond monitoring the company's internal infrastructure that is based on Kubernetes. So the, this talk is called an anomaly-based detection system for monitoring Kubernetes infrastructures. So, this talk, we have four key uh, topics. First, I'll introduce the problem and define its significance. Number two, I present the, the, the solution proposed. Three, the experimental results and discussion of the results. And finally, the conclusions and uh, future work. So, the, we know that monitoring networks is uh, not a very practical thing because there are many variables that you should uh, analyze on real time. So it's limited both in time and scope. We see in the graph that there are multiple variables. And if we add to that, that we are working with Kubernetes infrastructure, we are no longer working with uh, uh, fixed machines, but with ephemeral machines that are created and destroyed. This is event-based and also uh, distributed um, uh, technology. It's, it's, uh, we are speaking of open source uh, of the Cloud Native uh, Foundation. So how this it's open source, how do we add artificial intelligence? Well, the machine learning and de deep learning models are well known because of their high uh, detection rates in this article that I published in 2022 for DDNOS. Uh, um, it was uh, estimated that the tree-based models in terms of accuracy, precision, and uh, recall reach uh, 100% uh, score. So it, by combining this, we have artificial intelligence, we have Kubernetes, we have monitoring of several real-time variables monitoring. And as we have the uh, voice... Um, uh, we, we, we have the MLUX uh, concept of machine learning operations. Basically, we speak of all the flow of work of artificial intelligence from the time a model is defined uh, to um, the operation. And in the market, there are different operators for all of these. In this uh, paper, we um, uh, studied Kubeflow, Kedro, Airflow, and we analyzed them with uh, five basic criteria. The first is whether the orchestrator that we are analyzing deploys uh, its infrastructure using Kubernetes. Number two, whether it's open source, whether it's free. And number four, whether it permits a metric level analysis. And the counterpart would be the logging, but we are very interested in metric level because we can define our features or variables. And finally, if uh, there is a workflow orchestration point to point and end to end. So based on the chart, we can conclude that Kubeflow um, is, and Kedro are, uh, meet uh, these uh, specifications, but Airflow is a very uh, a general, um, uh, and, but Kubeflow is uh, for machine learning, so we decided to uh, implement Kubeflow for the pipelines of artificial in intelligence at Aligo. And obviously, the data part is extremely important. We analyzed four tools for collecting data. Not only do we want to analyze the metrics, but also we want to do it based on time series to see how they vary uh, as uh, the minutes and uh, days go by. And we analyze four different tools for uh, collecting data. Prometheus, Istio, InfluxDB, and OpenTSDB using different criteria, whether they allow you to uh, analyze the uh, Kubernetes infrastructure, if they are open source, uh, free, metric support, uh, time series format, and we defined a metric based on uh, the number of stars that uh, the repositories have in hip uh, uh, and the more uh, when uh, the the tool is more popular, it means that it has a larger community behind it. And we had about fifty three thousand um, uh, 
uh, stars in GitHub. So this is a tool that has a large community around it. The pipelines that I told you about earlier, it's crucial to orchestrate the, uh, through Qflow. One of them is two. One of them is a pipeline. We create the data set and we process it. What do we do in the processing? We normalize the variables. And then in parallel, we train machine learning and deep learning models. I'll explain that now. And finally, we report the training results. And finally, for the testing part, each minute in the company is uh, we recover data, you reprocess them, and you uh, classify them in real time based uh, on a system that I'm about to show you. For the machine learning and deep learning models, we follow a one class classification approach. What does that mean? Well, to tell you the truth, in production uh, environments, uh, it uh, has from 90 to 95% of the instances overflows as non attacks and only a small percentage as attacks. So, the conclusion is, well, what about if you change your algorithm and you model it with all the data, in the end, what your model will do was to learn very well what's normal, and then when it detects an anomaly, it's going to, it's not going to recognize the pattern, so there's going to be a deviation, and that will create an anomaly. So this one class classification approach uh, makes use of all of the normal data that we have in our environments. And this machine learning model we defined too. One was a uh, uh, one class support vector machine that, uh, in a nutshell, says it, it uh, sketches a hyperplane to separate the positive from the negative instances. Uh, positives are um, anomalies and uh, the negatives are normal. Then we have the isolation forest where we have different trees and the the trees that are closer to the roots or the upper part are potential anomalies. For the deep learning part, we define an, uh, an encoder that we and you, we. It's like a compression algorithm. We we have a PDF and we compress it and decompress it. Or what we want is the PD the initial PDF to be like the one that we decompress. That X, my X may be the same as. X prime. So we here we have an infrastructure where we uh, passed uh, the normal traffic, and when the algorithm tries to so uh, so as to speak decompress the traffic that's an anomaly, there will be a larger percentage of errors because it doesn't recognize the pattern. So we recognize instances that do not belong to a normal thing. And as part of the results, we run a first experiment using the LATAM dataset, the LATAM DDoS IoT dataset that is available in an article that I published in 2022, thanks to a, a Frida Grant. And why did we use this? Uh, because with the help of uh, Aligo and uh, the University of Monterey in Tokyo, we decided that uh, it was a very good strategy to see the performance of the three different level, uh, models with Aligo. We used 5% of the data set, about uh, 42,000 flows, and we emulated a production environment with a lot of normal traffic, around um, 95% and only about 5% outliers. And that helped rank our models. And since the beginning, we inferred that the uh, auto encoder, we had a higher performance. And the closer the curve to the different colors in the graph is closer to the top right corner, the better performance of the model. Our encoder, in this case, showed an accuracy well, under the curve of 88%, isolation forest, and then finally the vectoral support machine, the auto encoder was better, and in machine learning, the uh, isolation forest proved better. It's not only important to have metrics and time series analysis, it's important to define them. We define over 20 metrics and divided them in four categories. According to Google, these are the golden signs of monitoring. We uh, define metrics with the four characteristics, latency, traffic, errors, and satura saturation in our governance environment. For latency, what we want to address is how long it takes our environment to provide a task service. For traffic, the question that we want to answer is how much demand is placed on the environment, errors, how many fails are there, and for saturation, how much is the environment being used. 
across these tw over 20 metrics, we uh, measure the CPUs of bots, memory, network, desk, also the bots that fail to raise latency in response through an API, and so on. The second experiment, initially we use LATAM data, as I said, in technical terms, that is our offline learning and this now learning is testing the models in the production environment. We first ran our training pipeline with data that was collected every minute for 10 days within the illegal architecture, close to 12,000 flows out of which 90% was used for training, 10% for testing. And through Telegram, we received once training was over the results, both accuracy and a model loss to see how well they were trained. You can see on screen that our vector support machine had a almost 25% uh, performance, isolation for 90%. Our uh, encoder loss was close to zero, showing that the model is extracting information patterns. Once we have the three models, we can make the best use of the predictions. We define a drop-in system through that equation. We have an outlier confidence score equals 0.6x plus 0.3y and 0.1z. What does x, y, and z mean? x is 0 or 1 if 1 if it's an anomaly or 0 if it's regular traffic detected by our encoder. It's higher 0.3 isolation forest, 0.3 and 0.1z is uh, of our vector support machine. So just to show you an example, if our auto encoder detects an anomaly and we add to that that the isolation forest also detected together, we'll have 0.9. According to our flow definition, we are speaking about an anomaly. So we not just rely on one model, but for our predictions to have more confidence, we will use the three algorithms. So based on chaos engineering, that is a very interesting concept, we defined different experiments. One of them was memory saturation. We concluded that, for example, an exhaustive use of resources is something that might lead to trouble within a company. And here we ran this experiment at different times. Every hour, five minutes, randomly, we attacked different spots. And the pipeline should detect the anomaly. In this case, you can see the three peaks at three different times. And 100% of the anomalies were detected. And in real time, we received a warning via Telegram to check what was happening so we could do something about it. At 5 in the afternoon, we received a message, 6, 7. And we can conclude that we defined, and not just defined, but also implemented and tested a cloud native architecture to not only develop this project, but also other AI projects in Alio. As I said before, this is a Kubernetes environment. And if you look from left to right, we can see N targets. One of them is a new vector. New vector is an application for security monitoring and to monitor the entire life cycle of our containers. Then we collected data with Prometheus, different pipelines running thanks to Kubeflow. We use MiniIO for well transferring information on pipelines, Amazon. Uh, S3 for cloud technology to version our models. We also use KS Mesh to well test KS in the market. We also have Litmus. We consider KS Mesh is easier to use. And as I mentioned earlier, Kubernetes is the um, technology from the foundation and the foundation defines different maturity levels for the technologies that are incubated here and this is considered at the higher level i believe it's level three and it also shows great um, engineering and security behind the tool and finally communication was done in real time through telegram so
As I mentioned before, our objective was met. Network engineers are not devoting as much time on monitoring in front of a computer the external infrastructure of the company. In the future, I mean, we are using Prometheus, and Prometheus has a retention time by default of 15 days. We want to change that default period to increase the number of days for more data. I mentioned the classification approach of one class, one single class that is quite good to model what is anomaly and what is not. But for better troubleshooting of the problem was detected, it is important to add a new classification layer so that anomaly that was detected can be um, we can identify what type of threat that is. In addition to the different models where we can fine tune the hyperparameters and the different values for the equations of the algorithm, we want to tune automatically the model parameters. Right now we do it iteratively and manually, but we want to integrate random search, for example. So all of this work is available on um, on the uh, Latin American Transactions Journal. It was published under that name. You can just scan the QR co code as well. And I think we're missing one slide, but if you look for this project on Google, you, we have the open source repository. We can see our code, our experiments. Because since the beginning, we just defined that we want open source technologies, we need to make ours open source as well. And what Aligo is doing, we are seizing the power of AI for Latin America to be more brilliant, to be a better place, and bridging the gap between humans and machines. So I encourage you to scan the QR code to send us a WhatsApp message. And that would be all on my end. Thank you. Bueno, eh, muchísimas gracias a Genaro. Thank you, Genaro. And we do have time for a few questions. I don't know if there are any. Please don't be shy. I know that you are full after lunch. But please, let's just seize the opportunity. We have brilliant people here. I don't see any hands, no questions in the Q&A chat either. So I guess we're processing. We're processing the information so you can reach out to Genaro during the break. Thank you very much.